And welcome into the draft of Game 2 of Relax versus He He United. I am Roxas, and once again with me is Coucher. So what do you think of that last game, friend? Well, I think He He completely surprised us. I mean, I knew they were pretty good and kind of even in terms of skill remaining. level, but Relax, I have to say that they completely got crushed, to be honest, Five in the first game. Remaining. Yeah, and it happens didn't sometimes. Have I mean, answers to anything. Uh, well, well, I mean, teams get crushed. That's just the nature of the game, and uh, just because of the snowballing nature of video games in general, it's like in in basketball or football when you're ahead and score, you don't actually run or jump faster or throw farther. But in these games, you do. So when you have teams that are high school level and know how to press their advantage and they make sure they're aggressive about it, I mean, things that look like stomps happen because small. Advantages snowball very quickly out of control, but so far no adjustment in the draft um, Except uh, relax. They do not have their stand-in now. They do have tame my wild So he's back playing for them. We'll see if that's gonna play any influence and they do go ahead and ban invoker Yeah, really standard as far as bannings go and he, he actually taking out the tree of protector I think relax themselves banned it out last time around but first pick ember spirit is available dazzle Center War Runner. I have no idea what even tickles their fancy, but they go Oh, they want to play the Wisp up. game. Dire team pick. <laughs> oh, the IO. I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, some teams like Fnatic, for example, they ran the IO. They didn't care how nerfed it was or anything. But suddenly, other teams have been starting to pick it up again. It just adds another element to the game. You have to play a little bit more conservatively. Have to at least try to have more vision on the map to know where the IO is with the relocates coming in and all. But you know, what do you actually think they're going to counter the IO pick with? Well, I mean, there are a couple schools five of thought with remaining. countering the Wisps. Obviously, a five-man lineup is quite good against Whips, so going for a super Reserve early push time. or anything like that is good. Also, uh, counter initiators are great. Um, and most of the time that's looked for in their supports. Heroes like Lich, Witch Doctor, Disruptor are all quite good. Um, or you can go for something like uh, a team fighter, such as Enigma, such as Magnus, to say, to like bait the relocate and just all of a sudden that sets it for a team fight because then there are three heroes that at least clumped for one of your team fight ultimates. And it all just depends on what you're comfortable with. I think most heroes or most teams in 6.78 would just try to try to run five man lineups, but. He <laughs> uh, picking up the AA and the Marana look like they might just try to conquer it in the laning phase. And as we saw, if they won the laning phase last time, well, th they know how to press that advantage pretty well. And it's going to be even easier with an AA and Marana, who are two incredibly strong laners in this patch. Yeah, and the AA, it's pretty decent as well. Once he hits that level 6 and the Ice Blast actually connects, then the IO, Tether, Double Heal, it just won't work Ten anymore. Then again, it would him to actually require to hit his ultimate. Five and I mean, maybe can dodge it if it's fast enough just with the tether movement speed and whatnot. It's still, still easy to hit it like time. in a team fight just because it's such close range. Hit, obviously hitting the cross map ones are going to be a bit difficult but um, the other thing that I might be seeing out of Hee Hee now that they, they've kind of shown normally when you pick up a Murana you don't really show your hand. That's like the strategical advantage of picking up Murana super early but Seeing as they're just going to try to, like, this kind of reveals that they're going to try to fight the Wisp plus one and whatever other Dogs. heroes they're going to be picking up, such as Nature's Prophet or Radiant anything like man. that. Uh, they're going to be trying to fight it head-on. So I think Timbersaw is going to be in the question as well, as well as Centaur, which I mean, just gets banned Dire out. Just because those are both quite good against the Wisp plus one partners, uh, who are going to be strength heroes, which are Timbersaw is great man. against, and... Centaur, who obviously has a great counter initiation, or any other hero like that. Yeah, the Timber Saw is really good against the IO. First of all, he can just set down the Chakram to wherever the relocate is coming to, as well as just blow up the IO immediately. Him, of course, being a strength hero as well, the Wisp that is. So, uh, even a bit Ten better. To be honest, I really would like to st see just more and more of Timber Saw getting picked up. Five Some teams really have right. started experimenting with him with more than others. But well, I, we might see it now, but Yayo, tiny combination, is not going to be happening this game at least. So what do you think that Relax would take as a secondary pick, like after the tiny for the Yayo combo? 
Uh, I think Sven is very strong when you have a Dark Seer, just because of the ability to vacuum people into your cleave radius. Um, and God Strength is incredible, and not to mention when you have an Ion Shell help. Ten seconds um, remaining. But that's looking in the team fight. If you're looking in the laning phase, uh, which Five I think is where they're going to be needing to prioritize because Radiant that's where they kind of pick. lost the game the last game. They could go for something like a CK or a Slardar, uh, but it depends on if they want to prioritize a team fight and also with what they're comfortable, what Yoki is comfortable playing. Uh, I think that takes more priority, but I personally like Sven the most, especially when there's an Ember Spirit on the field who's very, very squishy. Very squishy. Yeah, it would be pretty nice as well, Ten because Sven maybe. goes for a BKB anyway, more often than not. So, with the BKB Five is really good against the Ancient Apparition, and even the Mirana and the Ember Spirit do, I mean, a decent Reserve amount of magic time. damage. So, a Sven actually would like to see it as well, and he got buffed in this current patch, I think he got 6 extra base damage, right? Yeah, something like that. And he has a lot of armor too, he's pretty much impossible to harass out of lane. Yeah, and well, his war cry would help against just the Ember Spirit's slight of fist spam as well when maybe Relax is just trying to push high ground but the Ember Spirit is making it too annoying for them. Then war cry, extra armor, extra movement speed. I, mean, I actually really could see them picking it up. But Relax, they're just completely digging into their bonus time, trying to figure out what would be the best possible hero to go for. I mean, some more team fight on top of the Dark Share would always be nice as well. They go with a Wraith King, probably a support, but still powerful with a relocate um, if it is a carry. Well, we see teams run it both as a support and carry and have success in, in both instances as long as there's this, uh, a good support cast. Um, I remember seeing a couple games, I think it was M Mineski that just ran Wraith King Dazzle two games in their two game series and just completely wrecked face with it because... The Wraith King can just go up and hit your axe and you, like, he doesn't care. He has Grave and he has an extra life. Like, whatever. Um, Five seconds and it, it, it's also Lockdown that they lack when, with the Wisps and Darkseer uh, currently time. on the field. And you definitely need Lockdown against mobile heroes such as Mirana and Ember Spirit both. Yeah, it certainly helps out. It would be really easy to just go for zero. Well, maybe not zero, but just some slows or anything against Ember and Mirana, it would almost be impossible to actually get kills on them like that. And Wraith King, his stun like cooldown is really low as well, only 8 seconds. So effectively, every 6 seconds you're stunned for 2 seconds, so that's pretty good if you ask me. Yeah, not to mention, he doesn't cast any other spells, like... That's literally all his mana pool has to be dedicated to besides just having enough mana to reincarnate, which... It's really not that hard if you go into a fight with full mana, especially at the later levels. And if you go for something like a blade mail or drums, which increases your mana pool, pretty easy. And if he has the Wisp buffing him up, um, even if he's not the carry, maybe uh, the Wisp is going to choose to buff him up instead because he might just be in the front lines trying to take the damage for his team. He's just not going to have any mana problems anyway. And I think Wraithfire Blast is one of the most underrated stuns in the game just because of the damage over time as well. Uh, and the slow just Ten seconds remaining. does so for you in a team fight. It really does, and actually, Five looking at Relax's lineup remaining. so far, do you think they could go for a Magnus Smith, have the Empower on Wraith King for the cleave, as well as just combo it up with the Darks here? Team pick. Yeah, that could be good. Um, I think Magnus is also pretty good, because you might not want Hehe to pick it up. Uh, they, they've shown last game they can run on Orthodox lanes, and, and Ember Spirit with Empower is actually quite... Uh, quite scary as well, plus that would give them an element of team fight that they are currently lacking. But Witch Doctor are going to be picked up once again in conjunction with Ember Spirit, so Ten we saw its, its power last game, and he, he going to be just trying Five to run it again? Remaining. Yeah, well, why fix something that ain't broken? <laughs> I mean, Reserve of course, time. they have a different lineup at the moment, like for the Witch Doctor Aya combination just with the Voodoo Restoration, just double the heals. It was pretty nice, but Witch Doctor, especially the Paralyzing Casket, can be so devastating against the enemy. And relax, well, I guess they're not going for a Magnus, because they pick up the Storm Spirit. And it's really good against the Ancient Prision, as well as Witch Doctor, just zip through the entire team fight with his ultimate, and go for the squishy supports at the back lines, maybe even before something like the Ice Blast flies out. 
Not to mention, uh, a natural remaining. orchid builder is really powerful against Ember Spirit, who relies so heavily on getting his damage Five out through casting remaining. his spells. He doesn't stand there and right click. He needs Flame Guard on, he needs to use his remnants from ability, and he needs to spam Slate of Fist on cooldowns. Plus, he needs to get Searing Chains to make sure the Witch Doctor can get a good Death Ward. So, Storm Spirit going to be good. He also lanes very well against Ember Spirit. So. I, I think that that's an incredibly smart pickup. Plus, it gives them a jump in initiator during the remaining. time that Darkseer is going to be wanting to be farming up a mech and a pipe for Five his team. Which remaining. normally, Darkseer is not one of those. Okay, I have my first item and go sort of off laners like time. Centaur or Bat Rider. He can farm the jungle very it. quickly, and he can get a lot of utility items for his team. And he has such an incredible int game that he has a mana pool to support all of them. So. Normally you want the Dark Seer to go the offlane, get levels, and just farm for like 20 minutes and all of a sudden come out with all your team fight items. So that's uh, going to be giving the room to the Dark Seer to do that. But as the last ban, we see Life Stealer banned out, and then we see Nyx Assassin going to be banned out as the offlaner. So two very smart bans. Uh, Life Stealer would have been pretty hard to deal with uh, just because it's going to take a long time for Hee Hee to get their damage remaining. out, and Rage is going to be really annoying to deal with uh, when most of their lockdown is obviously Radiant magical. Uh, plus in conjunction with the Storm Spirit, pretty good. Uh, they do pick up a Medusa though, once again. So Witch Doctor, Ember Spirit, Medusa. Le oh, looks like we're going to see an aggressive tri lane with the safe lane Medusa again. Yeah, it sure feels like it. They may switch it up a, a little bit and maybe have the Medusa actually in the middle of the tri lane with Mirana safe lane or Mirana off lane completely. I mean, maybe they want to throw Relax off card a little bit as far as the laning goes. I I mean, at the moment, when I saw the line, line up with the Medusa last week, I was like, okay, they're going to run the exact same as before, just with two, two hero difference. Yeah, I think uh, so. And also, just Mirana is so good in an aggressive try lane, I, I don't really think that he passed that up. And it would be really strong as well with them having three ranged heroes. Like you talked about in the last game already, Witch Doctor has actually a really good attack Ten animation plus some pretty remaining. decent base damage. And now combo that up with the chilling touch Five of the Ancient Apparition remaining. as a free ranged hero tri lane aggressive. And wow, relax. I that's that's sketchy to me, man. That yeah, I have to agree with you there. Well I'm I'm not too sure, I mean it's greedy to say the least by them. Especially if they have the Storm Spirit as well, they're just momentum based heroes, both the Storm and the Shadow Fiend. And even the Dark Share, I mean, he needs the early levels and so on. So if he, he managed to do what they did last game and just completely dominate the laning phase, I think there's nothing relaxed we'll be able to do about it. Yeah, I think so. And Shadow Fiend just, he's just so squishy, man. I don't. Like, yeah, if you get 36 souls by level 8 in your. You're getting a couple free demon edges that no one else is getting. Yeah, you can hit really hard for that stage of the game, and your agility gain is really good, and you're, you have the built-in minus armor, remaining. so you, you right-click pretty hard, but you need a lot of survivability, you need mobility, or your positioning has to just be immaculate all game, which is going to be so hard against his lineup. But Well, they're going to be going for it, Prepare and for on the side of Relax, running the Wisp this time, we're going to have Windex on the support Wraith King, it's going to be Dread. Going into the mid lane as the Storm Spirit, we have Shocklo. And going in the safe lane currently on the Dark Seer, it's going to be Yoki. And last but not least, on the one position Shadow Fiend, we'll have Tame My Wild. And for he, he up on the dark side, Kaibutsu is at the moment on the safe lane as the Medusa, as predicted, with Chip Cyan playing the Ancient Apparition, leaving Reload to play the Mirana on the tri lane with Nihis, of course. Supporting it on the Witch Doctor once again, and Hava will be heading towards the mid lane on the Ember. So I have a tactical oh. pause here as they are. Wow. <laughs> Is Kaibutsu getting d -dust? That would suck just massive donkey balls. I mean, who the hell even does that? I mean, maybe it's some relaxed fanboy, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's even DDoSing or anything, but like literally. Who thinks it's fun to mess up? Well, I mean, th that's not that. It's that. Uh, I'm just going to establish this now. Um, what DDoSers want is attention. They want us to be talking about them right now on the stream. So I just, I don't even want to acknowledge it. 
that that's a nice way to address it, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess this is going to get a little deep for just a moment, but there were like there was a period of a few months, uh, about a year and a half ago, I guess, or maybe a year ago, where there were just a bunch of shootings in public places in the United States, and they would always get on the news, um, and they would always get on the news and be acknowledged, like, this guy, like, this is his name, and he's the one that shot everyone, but after a while, they were like, we should make a movement to stop thinking about them and think about the victims, and don't even acknowledge the shooter by their name or the perpetrator, and I, I think that it's very reasonable, because that's why they do it, but. DDoSers are not, they're not going to go in a public place to shoot someone, but they do it for the attention, and I don't, I don't think that acknowledging that attention is going to help, I think that ignoring them is what helps, so. Regardless, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a, the skirmish was avoided thanks to the Radiant Observer Ward here, and it looks like they're going to be switching up the lanes they want. Uh, they saw the Darkseer down here, the battle so they're going to be wanting to get the Medusa against the Darkseer, so they make a quick rotation. And uh, Creep Spawn, no blood has been shed just yet. And Region Rune picked up at level 1, most useless rune, unless there's been a fight, which there wasn't. And we're going to just transition them into our laning phase. Yeah, it's nice rotations by he he. I just hope for them that it won't backfire actually sending Medusa towards the bottom lane. But since it is 1v1, he should be fine. I got some melee hero again as well. So Kabutsu yeah. showed that he was quite good at that. and. Darkseer is uh, a lot less tanky than a Tidehunter, plus his only way to reliably farm with Ion Shell just pushes the lane in her favor anyway, so. Not to mention, since she's near Ancients, uh, if she does decide to get QT and pick up a Quelling Blade, she can actually stack and farm these Ancients if she really feels like it with Split Shot. So it's going to be easy enough. Most interesting thing though is that they're going to put Tame My Wild uh, as a Shadow Fiend in the mid lane, which is pretty good against the Ember Spirit, and they're going to put the farming... Uh, they're really going to have Storm Spirit as a farmer in the tri lane. And to be honest, it's good for the Medusa matchup because usually the Dark Shares, I mean, it's 1v1 if the Dark Share is on the dire side or from Yoki's the dire side. Yoki's going balls deep, man. He's got double ion shell in between the tier 1 and tier 2. <laughs> I, you're kind of putting yourself in a precarious position, buddy. It's going to be really hard for you to get out without aggroing the tower. Um, Kabutsubi activates his mana shield, is not going to take too much damage, and Yoki going to have to just walk the long way around, but Dread is going to be pulling for him, so it looks like they're just going to transition into the dual lanes. Yeah, the dual lane definitely will be a lot better, and I mean, Dread just pulling and getting some XP and farm for himself definitely won't be bad for the Red King either. But yeah, like I was trying to say, is that usually the Dark Shares, when they're in a 1v1 matchup, they want to go for the creep skip, but since Yoki, he's from the Radiant side, and the Dire, bottom tier 1 and tier 2, it's so hard to actually go and creep st skip that because you have to run so long way around from the river to actually get back to the lane. Yeah, pretty difficult. I mean, he's not going to have a hard time getting experience at the very least, and most of the time as a Dark Seer, you, you get most of your last hits just from jungling later on, but maybe a little difficult. He actually is going to surge up, try to body block Kabutsu here. They do have a Ray Fire Blast. They're going to be using it Mana Shield. He has full mana though. Going to be buying a lot of time, a lot of the creeps there as well, but there's more body blocking, trying to eat a tango through, and not going to be getting, actually, she's completely boxed in. Another Ray Fire Blast is coming in, Yoki taking a lot of tower damage, oh, is he going to go down? No. Dread gets the first blood, and Yoki manages to survive, they both get away with a sliver of HP, meanwhile, on the top lane, Nahiz, he's uh, taking a little bit of harassment just from the overcharge, there's another remnant, there's another overcharge there as well, arrow to fly, hits Shocklo though, there's a chilling touch going on the wisp, and he's still real, uh, <clears throat> Oh my gosh, recharging Shockwell, but he ultimately goes down to the right clicks and the chilling touch, and he gets away uh, with a little bit of HP as well, thanks to the bottle charges in the mid lane. Tame My Wild harassing uh, the Ember Spirit out with his 19 souls already. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this time around, the Shadow Fiend definitely has a way better start in the first game. And like you can see from the mid, that. That's just so sick. I mean, together with the denies, he has 32 last hits compared to five. And how? Well, I mean, we were talking about in the last game that the Invoker does really well against the Ember Spirits. But I mean, Shadowfiend, if he gets the early souls in the Necromastery, just the right click, the physical damage against the Ember, it's so hard. And the Ember, he doesn't even have a bottle yet. Like four minutes in. That's unheard of almost. Yeah. Um. The Tame I Wild getting an incredible start on the Shadow Fiend. This, this is what you want to see, especially on the Radiant side. Being able to flash farm uh, 
This is a, the scary Shadow Fiend that we sometimes see picked up, and just with a couple of casual raises, he just manages to get a kill. Um, HW, I get a little greedy staying in lane when he didn't have the regen, but... Wow. Tame my wild, absolutely dominating. Top lane? They're going on the reach, Doctor. Yep, they're actually going there. The Wisp, he's going to be able to help the region, but no, the Starfall is able to secure the kill. Dread throws out a Wraith Fire Blast on Nihis, and he's going to be able to take him down the right clicks, but never mind. Relo going to be able to pick up a double kill with the help of the right clicks of the Chilling Touch. Doesn't have the mana for an arrow just yet. Just hit 100 mana, and not to mention HWA, he came up here. Uh, he has no gold. What did he spend his gold on? Oh, he has his bottle, so... Yeah, yeah someone purchased well, TV. the top lane, it's not working out for them and for Relax, and to be honest, I can't or would, wouldn't have even seen it working out in my Bottom mind. Bottom lane, Tama Wild, he's got a DD rune, he's diving the tier 2 tower. Dread is there with a Ray Fire Blast, the Shadow Raid is going to do some damage, You're just a casual right click. Give me able to secure the kill, chalk it up as a 1 for 0. Never mind, Shadow Fiend actually gets the assist, but there's a rotation in from both the supports. Nihis coming in and goes on to Dread, but there's still a DD Shadow Fiend, man. Uh, he's going to secure the kill with the Ion Shell, but the AA trying to get back to the th his tower, but there are creeps taking the tower aggro. One more right click's going to be able to get it. He managed to secure it with the Shadow Rays, and there's a TP in for Medusa. But this, this DD rune, man, like, don't... <laughs> Shadow Phoenix is hitting for 200 right now. And he's just going to casually go back to mid lane, so... Very easy rotations there, and he's already up to 1400 gold. If he wants to go away, get away with a hand of Midas, he's going to have it very early. Yeah, I think it would be a pretty decent choice as well. If you can get it that fast, it pretty much always pays off for you. Just because you can get more levels. And for a Shadow Fiend, he wants to hit that at least level 14 to have a maxed out presence of the Dark Lord as well. That's when he really starts to add that. Oh, Hava in the mid lane. Just two rages, one right click. And he's down to like quarter of an HP, if not less. Yeah, those are maxed out uh, Shadow Raises too. So 600 damage just from that. and. HWA once again going for the no flame guard build. So one thing Those I really want to point lot. out is that crazy he's level eight on the Shadow Fiend. He was level eight before six minutes. And Hava, he's not even level six yet. And well Medusa at least is, but there are rotations and dread going for the stun on Medusa now. Yep, those are raid fire blasts out there and Tema is coming up. Gonna be trying Oh, this gets a raise on the high ground. <laughs> Easy. And he does have the Gloves of Hesa. He's going to have his Hand of Midas finish uh, in about 20 passive gold. In the top lane, there was a bit of a skirmish. Uh, Storm Spirit, or Shakyo, had to go back home. Uh, but, I mean, it's a, it's a tri lane that's Radiance really difficult to stay alive. He has a Storm Spirit. And he's only level 4. This now put the point in Electric Vortex, attack. so maybe he has a bit of a disable to buy himself some time. But before he gets level 6, it's going to be really difficult to avoid the combo in this lane. It certainly is, and I'm not even too sure what they were thinking with sending a IO Storm Spirit dual lane up against a tri lane. They just don't have too much to work with, and you can see it with Chasro being only level 4. At least he has his power threat, so last hit wise, it's not actually going that bad for him because even Kai Butsu on the Medusa has less, although he was like in a 2v1 lane, but oh, they're going on Kai Butsu again. Yep, they're going to be diving the tower, and Dread. Oh, Stone Gaze is going to be used, but the Iron Shell able to secure their damage as well. Uh, there's a rotation in from Relo and Nihis and the Star Swarm. Going to be able to secure the kill, at least from the reincarnation, but Dread. He gets arrowed immediately after. He's still taking a lot of damage from the Tier 1 tower. The Catapult gets the kill in the meantime, but the Iron Shell Yoki, he manages to get a kill as well, but Wraith King actually secures it with the right click. And Yoki, 2 0 and 4, having a much better start, but in the top lane as well, there's a double kill going the way uh, from a rotation from HWA. That so. was so fast, those deaths, like just. Slight of fist jeering change, and suddenly the two are dead. And well, the Mishasso. chilling touch really helps there with the extra 60 damage. Yeah, it certainly does. And well, it's a nice combination for them. And Hihi, they really need those kills badly because no single hero on Fihi is actually farming as far as just getting last hits goes. I mean, show reload on the Mirana 3 0 and 1. It's pretty damn nice, but it's still 29 last hits compared to. Crazy is 54 on the Shadow Fiend, plus his Hand of Midas, and he's 3 0 and 2 as well on the kill board. Yeah, and this is. I mean, there are a couple different schools of thought as far as building Shadow Fiend. I guess any, any heroes in general. Some. Oh. Bottom lane, might be some action going on. Yep, Dread, he th uh, threw out. Uh, didn't throw out a Rethry Blast, he actually just caught out with a Paralyzing Class. He was running in with a Haste Room, and the Ice Blast gonna miss as well as the Sacred Arrow, and Dread should be able to get away. And has a three minutes left on his ultimate, so certainly didn't want to give that up there. 
Top lane though? Uh, no, I, I saw an overcharge of Wisp and thought they might be going on to uh, HUA, so. But anyway, yeah, Shadow Fiend, a couple of different ways of, of Schools of Thought is saying, like, well, Shadow Fiend's so good at flash farming with raises that you don't really need to make him even better at farming. But then the thought is, like, if I make him super good at this, it's going to just make him even scarier late game, so. I, I personally think that Midas on Shadow Fiend, like, yeah, he does, he's one of the few heroes that does genuinely benefit from the attack speed. So that's nice, but I still think that, like, Helm of the Dominator is just as good. Yeah, I mean, he's probably going for the Helm of Dominator at some point anyway, so might have just, oh god, top lane. Just, that kill happened so fast, they had the Ice Blast flying in with just Slight of Fist with Searing Chains. And if you max out two, those two spells first, before the Flame Guard, just the burst damage potential is definitely a lot stronger than with the Flame Guard, which provides, of course, the defensive capabilities of just magic absorption. But of course, it's more like sustained damage. Yeah, so you, ha you have really to like be the up bit. there in their face for a little while to get the Searing Chain, or the uh, Flame Guard damage up there, whereas the Searing Chain Slate of Fist is a lot of burst, which synergizes really well with things like Star Storm and Ice Blast and Maladape, so... Good build. Uh, Ice Blast is going to come in, but Windex is going to be able to dodge that, and... In the mid lane, and nothing happening. There's Shadow Fiend. Ah, oh, there he is. So Tamar Wild's coming up to the top lane. He's actually going to be rushing in BKB. He's coming up here, doesn't have the mana for Wrecking of Souls. It looks like they're just going to push this top lane. I personally think this is a time in the game between 10 to 16 or 18 minutes Radiant when people should be the most aggressive with attack. Shadow Fiend because that extra 72 damage, most heroes just cannot stand up to that. And it's, it, it's good Radiant late in the game. It's still nice to have an extra 72 attack. damage, but definitely becomes less significant 40, 45 minutes onward. So uh, Relax is going to be trying to press that advantage. Oh, never mind. He TP'd back mid lane. Darn it! Yeah, that's... I mean, that they actually wasted a lot of time with the rotations up towards the top lane with four Radiant heroes and not even going for the tower with it. But then again, they really don't want Crazy to die on the Shadow Fiend, I guess. At least not before he gets the BKB finished up. They might have just pressed the advantage or, well, I guess they're leaving Charge Flow to get at least level 6 on the Storm Spirit on the top lane. Yeah, he, he just hit level 6 right now, so now there's Ball Lightning available to him. Not really going to have the mana pool to do too much with it, as he's only sitting on treads and a rogue and magi, working towards that orc and malevolence. Um, obviously with the Wiss helping him out, that's going to be nicer, helping him sustain his mana if it gets to that. But Relo, he's trying to catch Shadowfiend farming, he's actually going to be able to catch the Wiss. Sacred Arrow was off the mark, no, but he tethers back to Tamar Wild. Relo is forced to leap away to his teammates. And there's going to be an Ice Blast coming up the top lane, it's been pinged out. And it should hit on Shock Low. Uh, nah, it barely misses. A little fortuitous for him, but in the meantime, stacks and stacks upon stacks are going to be in the dire jungle, as well as stacks just farming. Everyone's farming, but in a farming war, a Midas Shadow Fiend is supreme in, in a lot of yeah, he's, he's doing so damn well at the moment. With the network, he's almost doubling the highest from Hehe, he, which is Relo on the Mirana. I mean, the two games in comparison, they're just... Like night and day almost. And yeah, well, and even though the Storm Spirit's been struggling, he's 0, 5, and 0, oh god, but Crazy, Tame My Wild, he's making up for all of it. They're making. And this is just. Uh, like when people talk about Shadow Fiend and like why you pick him on Radiant, is like. He's easy to shut down mid uh, if he gets roamed on. Because he's squishy and he has no mobility, but if you're on Radiant, you can just farm the camps, you can flash farm, you can recover. Uh, and then it's fine. Uh, but if you pick him up on Dyer, Dyer and you have a bad start and you have no recovery, he just becomes like a range creep. So it's just really demonstrating the difference uh, a Shadow Fiend shows whenever he has a good start versus a bad start. Speaking of which, they do get the tower, and Stone Gates is going to be used as well as Moonlight Shadow, but only Dread is looking there. He's the one that gets frozen. He has reincarnation though, and the Mystic Stakes is going to be able to get it off, but Tamar Wild coming in with the right clicks. He manages to finish off the Medusa as well as Witch Doctor. Ray is going to be avoided with one slate of fist, but uh, he's going to have to remnant outwards, and currently a 2 for nil. In the meantime, Dread and Yoki, they're chasing Relo. Relo is bottling up. He has a leap in 4 seconds, but the long range initiation coming in from Shaklo doesn't get the overcharge proc off, only gets one. There's a leap available. There's uh, one right click button in the meantime. Wisp's going to be cleaned up from the Ancient Apparition. 
and they decide not to dive the tier threes just yet, as Tamai Wild just goes back to farming casual 3.5k gold. Yeah, that's his PKB finished. I think he's gonna buy that item unless he thought, okay, I'm gonna go for S and Y or like Kevin's Halberd or something. But yeah, that's the PKB for him. And such a sloppy fight to be honest with he, he I mean, I understand them wanting to defend the tier 1 tower mid lane, but once they actually saw that Medusa's ultimate is doing absolutely nothing, like relax, all of them just turned around, turned their backs to the Medusa and stood there. They didn't even try to run away, they just stood, wait for the ultimate to end and turned around upon them. I mean, he, he, I don't think they should have stayed there, I, they just don't have the burst damage from like, Blink, epicenter, but all top lane, Kaibutsu. Speaking of burst like damage, yeah, Kaibutsu, he's gonna be zipped in from the Swarm Spirit, there's gonna be the Wisp up as well, not to mention Wraith Fire Blast was used, and easy, easy pickings for him. So, so we're seeing that power with the Storm Spirit and the uh, <clears throat> Wisp buff up, really helping Shaklo keep his mana pool up to help him get that sustained damage with the constant overload procs using the ball lightning, so. That's a good kill. Uh, Medusa is certainly someone you want to keep down. Uh, currently sitting at 0 and 6. What a crazy difference <laughs> in both the Shadow Fiend and the Medusa in both of these games. Yeah, there certainly is. And I thought Chacho is doing bad on the Storm Spirit with him having 0 5 0 before the two last fights now. But, yeah, like you said, the Medusa 0 6 and 0. I mean, it was maybe somewhat to be expected if you send him off lane. Of and solo 1v1 one one matchup against a melee hero, and Darkseer shouldn't do that well against Kaibutsu, I mean... Yeah, it's, it was just Thread on the Wraith King coming in to help. If that wouldn't have been the case now, oh god, he's in huge trouble on the Witch Doctor. Yeah, casually casting, now that's on cooldown, well, goodbye, hope it was worth your life. In the meantime, Kaibutsu, he's there as well, he's got his mana shield active, he's gonna have to use Stone Gaze to try to get away, but Yoki comes up, he tries to vacuum him up onto the ward spot, but actually is a little bit short. Dread, he turns around, there's an arrow, fly but it's it splits the wickets and there's some uh there's some ice vortexes there giving some vision but tamal wild comes in he has right clicks he has a bkb he has a double damage rune how did how did he find this but tamal wild he's going to be going on to a mega kill streak moonlight shadow is used defensively and there's no detection except on dread uh dread he hasn't popped the dust just yet he catches an arrow instead doesn't have reincarnation are they going to re-engage here which factor is back alive and tamal wild his dd is about at half time he still has direct of souls available it's going to be using a Shadow Rays to try to keep some distance. Maledict is on him, though, and he's uh, kind of awkwardly walking away. No one really wants to engage into either just yet. And, I mean, that's a successful fight for Relax. Yeah, it most certainly was. And you can just see, well, of course, getting a lucky double damage wound there, I guess, on the Shadow Fiend. He had it bottled up, just waiting for the perfect opportunity. But you saw that he, he I mean, they wanted to go in on the breaking so bad once he got arrowed for five seconds, but... Shadow Fiend with the double damage rune was just standing there as an insurmountable wall which he, he couldn't climb. And all yeah. the Shadow Fiend, he's just the playmaker of this game, but oh, he's dropping low, but of course there's the mech by IO and, and the tether as well. So. This is the other thing too is uh, Dread is actually getting very close to his Blink Dagger, sitting at 1850 gold. So when there's a man with two lives uh, just jumping in and smacking you and stunning you because he doesn't doesn't give a shit, well, those fights are going to be a lot harder because that's going to give a lot of space for Tamai Wild to just sit in the back and do damage. Yeah, you know, the lineup overall from Relax, it's pretty decent. I mean, sure, they're lacking some initiation at the moment, but... Oh, well, speaking of initiation, uh, there's going to be a blink in from Yoki. Kaibutsu going to be using Stone Gaze immediately, but Dread, he... Did he have a haste during that? Oh, he was served, that's right. But Shakyo going to be under a lot of duress. Reincarnation is popped as well. In the meantime, Tamai Wild is right-clicking down the Ancient Apparition, gets him really easily. Going to be able to get another right-clicks, and with the Shadow Rays, going to be able to finish off HWA. In the meantime, Shakyo did finish off the Witch Doctor, and... Kaibutsu is trying to get away, but he's chased by Dread. There's a Wraith Fire Blast as well. He's got an Island Shell. He has a Wiz to help him out as well. So he's going to have the mana for another Wraith Fire Blast. The Mana Shield doing what it can as well. And Yoki, he blinks in, tries to get through the trees. And Kaibutsu, you're not going to make it out of here. There is uh, Relo though. He's trying to right click down Wraith King, but still a 4 for 1. Not, not worth it. Not the position you want to be in. Not the trades you want to make in. Uh, you he see his respawn, he TP'd to the tier 2, trying to go on to Yoki, he's pretty much close to out of mana, he does have a soul ring and 10 stick charges though, so he's still ready to fight, and while well, your high ground's being pushed by Tamai Wild, he's actually taking a lot of damage from the Ancient Apparition with the Ice Blast, he may just to shatter with all those uh, tower hits he was taking, so getting a little greedy there and getting a lot of gold to the AA, 
So now only 1,500 gold from his ads, but still more action coming as Shaco being gone on by his spirit brother. He's just going to be able to TP out and get home. And chalk it up as an 18 for 10, but still the gold lead, EXP lead, still about 10k for each. Well, I mean, relax. They went a little bit overboard here at the moment, especially the Shadow Fiend. There was no reason to actually go that deep in. But I mean, it's not like the end of the world for them. It's them just relax overall. They have the advantage. I mean, sure, it's mostly <laughs> on the back of Crazy Shadow Fiend. But they just have way more initiation with the Storm Spirit just ultimating in, Ball Lightning in, Blink Dagger on Yoki, and now Blink Dagger, like you talked about as well, Dread, just picked it up once he got the gold for it. So they have three heroes who can just get in, plus of course then maybe Ayo comes in with Crazy on the Shadow Fiend. So they just don't even need to run in, all of them can just get easily in, whereas he, he the only one who can, only ones who can back off is Mirana with the Leap maybe from the initiation and Ember Spirit with the Fire Remnant. All the rest, though, they're just gonna be left to die. Yeah, I think at this point as well, um, Wisp Shadow Fiend is not... It's obviously certainly uh, not one of the tried and true combos, but channeling your Requiem and relocating it into a fight Raise is always very powerful, and attack. Wisp can kind of just chill out with Tame My Wild, and they can just farm the same way that a Tiny or CK usually do until a fight comes. They don't really need to be looking for the fight if they can just relocate in directly in the middle of the fight now that we have three Blink Initiators and... I mean, Sword Spirit's not a Blink Initiator, but Ball Lightning is pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's like one that does damage and gets you a distance that you like, so... So, he, he, they have to make some plays happen. Uh, I think that they do have the better late game, but Kaibutsu, sitting at 0 and 8, is not going to be hitting it anytime soon, especially if he's about to die here to three heroes. Moonlight Shadow is going to be used. Actually, Wisp is there as well. Dust was popped. Going to be kill secured. If, if there's no place to farm, how do you reach that place? Like, where you're it's supposed to be quote-unquote more powerful in the game, especially now that Tana Wild has finished up a full Daedalus at the 21-minute mark. Oh, that's just way too scary for them. I mean, he, he maybe they would have had or would stand a chance if they had, like, massive ancient stacks or whatnot for the Medusa to actually flash farm them with the split shot, of course, but there's no stacks whatsoever in their own jungle. They can't even stack because the enemy can farm them out. Oh, mid lane charge load, there's an arrow onto him. Yep, there's an arrow there. He's going to be able to get away. The cask is buying... Oh, oh god, that regen from the Wisp is just ridiculous. So, the cask is going to be annoying him a little bit. Ultimately, he's going to get away, but... HOB, he's out of mana. Uh, Yoki has everything he needs. He's got his mech as well. He's got his ultimate. and The map control just... Losing map control against a global lineup is just the most frustrating thing. Because you try to go out and farm. You try to split push the lanes, but... You see one hero and you see another hero on the map, you're like, alright, well, you know, I have time to split push this lane, I can always TP out as soon as they go missing. But against a Wisp, or against a Storm Spirit, or anyone with a Blink Dagger, one hero can just become four heroes like that, before you actually just have the physical time to react. So it just becomes so hard to just get out of your base, and any game where you're not going to be able to farm as quickly as the enemy is going to be a loss. Yeah, and actually, uh, oh, mid lane, they might go on somebody. Yep, the Ice Blast's gonna fall in Dread. He has Reincarnation. He actually loses it rather quickly. I really don't think they should re-engage. Yeah, Dread's just gonna TP out. That did not go the way they wanted to. Oh, no, but Tame a lot. He picked up a third TD room. There's a relocate in, but he catches an arrow to start off the fight. Maladic is there as well, but he's got 1,400 HP. Shocklow, he's coming in. He's going to be able to pick up the Ancient Apparition on the backside, but Yoki, he gets caught in the Stone Gaze. Vacuum into a wall. He popped his mech earlier, but this Tame Wild buffed up but the Wisp. He's got the Black King Bar as well. He's he just gives no hoots right now, and... They're going to be able to chase it off, only an AA for a Dark Seer so far, but in the meantime, Tame My Wild's going to be able to right-click HWA, there's a Death Lord there, he might go down, he's doing so much damage, one crit, two crits, ah, he goes down to the right place, but the Death Requiem, able to pick off the Witch Doctor, and reload, getting away with 49 HP. Yeah, that Death Requiem, oh my god, so much damage. I really didn't think it would do that much, but in the end, a 4 for 3 or 4 for 4 I think, and Yember bought back as well. Yeah, he was the only one buying back. So a pretty damn good fight for Hihi, all things considering, to be honest. I mean, they defended the tower, they got 4 kills. So they're hanging on just by a thread and just buying some more time to on so the ancient operation to maybe finish up the Aghanims. 
Because with the Aganims, actually, it's kind of hard to push into that. It's kind of hard, but... I mean, I think most of the, the previous fights have been kind of scattered, where it's like, alright, we're going to get a pick, but all of a sudden it turned into a fight, just because whenever you're hee hee and you just are kind of constricted to this one area of your base, and you're having to, you know, deward your own jungle, um, any pick-off kind of becomes a big team fight, just because you're all restricted to such a small area on the map. Uh, whereas if you're spread out, like, relaxes, because you have so much map control, pick-offs are a lot easier, so... Tamo Monty does pick up his own Blink Dagger, so gonna be Team Blink here. Everyone except the IO has one, I believe. Uh, I guess Storm Spirit's not gonna get one, but I kind of consider him the one when I think of Blink Initiators in my head on their team, just because he's a, a jumping initiator of sorts. So gonna be even more mobile, and uh, I think I'm interested if he's gonna be using that aggressively or defensively because he's had a kind of a hard time getting the position that he wants to in these fights, but gonna be a yeah, kind of a jack of all <laughs> trades item that he's gonna be looking for to take the fights on his own terms as opposed to the previous two where he's died. I think he's gonna find each of the other the secret shop. Couple of right clicks there, shadow raises, uh wow, oh, gets a crit. Oh that crit. Oh my god, I really In the meantime, thought Blink gonna be Dread, safe, but they're he's gonna be, gonna be trying to stun up Nihis, but Kaibutsu is there, he's I mean but Dread's got reincarnation, he doesn't care. Uh, he gets maimed though, that's really interesting. And Shackle in the backside, he's gonna be able to pick off uh, Marana and Dread. He comes back to life and he's trying to fight two, trying to fight both supports right now. He actually the Kulfi does proc under the Death Ward, the eye spot's gonna be there, but he's actually going to be picked off in the meantime. Medusa dies as well, and AA is the only one alive. Dread, he's gonna try a TP out, but Darkseer's there, doesn't, he doesn't have a vacuum. That cooldown's much too long, must be buffed, but. Still, a 4 for nil. Just starting off with an innocent trip to the secret shop on the Ember Spirit. and This is Rax, if not just Roche and Rax. I, I think they'll back off and go for Roche, as the respawn timers are quite short. Well, that is the only bonus. If you're so far behind your lower level, <laughs> you can respawn faster. <laughs> it's, not really it's not a good problem. It's not a good perk to have, right? <laughs> It most certainly isn't, and I mean, relax, they're just getting so many items up of all the Ice Blast, completely whiffs, everybody just scatters for the Ice Blast and going back in to finish up Roche. Yeah, Moonlight Shadow is used, but what can they really do? They are going to try to be a snatch, but Tama Wild really quick on it, got one crit below half health, tries to remnant down up to the high ground by the secret shop, and everyone blinks in the wrong direction, but now, good luck killing Tama Wild twice. <laughs> I'd say that's impossible unless he's confounded in dive and oh god. Wow, that, that happened so quickly I just panned away for a second. Shaco, he's zipping in, Tamai Wild, he's taking a lot of damage kind of unnecessarily. He actually gets frozen under the stone gaze, but this is just an Aegis. Uh, reincarnation not up on Dread, Shaco gonna be going on to Kaibatsu, and Yoki is there, he has a vacuum wall, hasn't used it yet, Tamai Wild just popped his BKB. Uh, Reload's being chased away, it looks like they're just gonna give up and be like, alright, let's just go for the Rax. Actually, I think Dyer's they might not even get attack. it, although then again, they just used the relocate to go back in the base and farm a, or region up, so they can easily go. They were dropping kind of low, but of course, relocate. That's and one of the p strengths for it as well. Yeah, blink in, crit, three Mega hits, kill. easy. The extra damage so. from the Orchid helping out as well. And, well, no Mantis style, no BKB coming up from Ember Speed. He's actually going in for his own Chrysalis, but god, he is so squishy right now. Blink in, me hits, goodbye. And he, he picked up an Eagle Song just casually there, so now he's hitting for a lot more as well. Hitting a lot faster. And God, th this is a Shadow Fiend that everyone's addicted to playing. It's like whenever you get, a pl get to play in SF like this, you want to play SF every game, right? You just kind of walk up and you hit people a few times and they die. Tame My Wild is a beast at the moment. He certainly is. Compared to game number one, <laughs> Shadow Fiend. Oh god, oh, they're going for it though. Yeah, but there's a vacuum into a wall, it hits three. Yoku is there, and he's got the ion shell as well, doing a lot of damage, and the arrow even missed. Uh, Witch Doctor and Ember Spear, they're coming up, but Tama Wild is just a mana requiem that doesn't hit anyone. It doesn't matter. The cast comes out, managing to hit Dread and Tama Wild. Uh, but this is what I was saying, man. Most of these series ending up 1-1 one, one are, are because of reasons like this. You change something slightly in your draft, and then all of a sudden, you're the one stopping. To be honest, 
the story in both games was that whoever was just forced to playing reactionary Dota completely lost the game. I mean, first game he, he they had the upper hand and they were dictating the fights as well as where they took place and everything. This time around, it's relaxed and it's the Wisp, man. Yeah, Wisp is making the comeback. I mean, this is a really strong hero. It's kind of hard to play against, but Dread, he's going balls deep. Yeah, yeah, well, that's reincarnate. He doesn't care. Uh, I guess I'll just click on the racks. It's whatever. Casual vacuum, casual Sheevas guard, casual TPM, casual butterfly, and looks like they do back off. Uh, never mind. Actually, he, they do want to take this fight. Link in. BKB going to be used. He's immediately going for the supports, going for the easy kill. Now going for Kabuza. God, he is hitting so fast right now and so hard. And Ember Spirit going to be dodging some of the damage from the Slate of Fist, but only delays the inevitable as he goes down. But on the backside, Yoki and Dread did go down. Both of them are quite low. 1,200 gold going towards Murana, and that was the best uphill fight that he, he could have taken. Uh, they were, it was really obvious that Relax was very hesitant there, and it certainly cost them overstaying their welcome. Uh, Shocklow, he's going to try to pick up the gem. He's out of mana, though. He doesn't even have a TP. I think he's just going to be buying a lot of time here before he ultimately gives up the gym. Unless he wants to do something cutesy like zip into a place in the trees where they can't reach him and try to drop the gym there to pick up later. Ah, nah, Mystic Snake going to finish him off. And well, that's a lot of gold uh, going towards the cores of Hehe. And that isn't a team wipe, but still. I mean, how often have you come back from 2,500 gold? Just If you look at the gold graph, like that dip down... Attack. Is so insignificant as far as the lead that <laughs> that Relax has managed to build in this game so far. Well, I mean, at the moment, it is Relax. This fight was kind of horrible for them. Sure, they got the melee racks, which is the most important one. The range racks almost dead as well. But giving away the kills and giving away so much gold, especially both Kai Boots as well as Reload, the carries for he, they got both of the kills. But even now, I mean, they were able to afford like one item off of those. Sans and Yasha as on the Kai Boots and Relo, I mean, he has the PKB and Yasha. Still, even with one item, there's virtually no damage output from them. Yeah. Well, it's also going to be really hard because Darkseer is going to be building into a Scythe of Vice, so now all of a sudden you have more Disable with the Blink, uh, blink and the Sheep Stick, so maybe you don't even get to get the Stone Gaze off, you don't get to get your BKB off before you just get right click down. Um, and there's just so much burst that he, he's punished really, really hard for being just a little bit out of position. And It's just hard to play Dota like that, man, where you're just constantly worried about making sure that everything that you do is perfect. Uh, just because right now Relax is in a position where you can they, they just punish you so hard with all of their initiatives, with all of their burst damage as well. And all their disables. Dyer's they just have it all going for them at the moment. He, 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 oh god, they're just gonna die. Oh, well, Moonlight Shadow gonna be buying a little bit of time. Ice Blast is coming in. This is an Agonim's Ice Blast, and there's the Stone Gaze that's gonna be used. The Searing Chains, they're actually getting it. They got him with the Death Lord Dread and Tim Wild are both frozen. Reincarnate gonna be there, and this is currently a three for nil. Dread, he's gonna go down, and there's a back wall hits on the three. BKB gonna be shut off from Marana, but Relo is gonna barely get out of there with a little bit of health. Dread, he's going down as well. Kaibutsu, he's on a killing spree. Relo's the only one to go down. In the meantime, uh, it looks like Shaklo and Yoki are going to be able to get away, but he, he taking the fights that they want, catching them out of position, using Moonlight Shadow, and I, Relax is playing pretty cocky at the moment. They I mean, are, I mean... It's going to take a lot more fights in this, Moonlight. but they're doing it. Yeah, Hava might still go down Yoki. Does he want to search now? He's finally going to back off. Doesn't have too much mana going for him. But at the moment... This fight was completely won by just Moonlight Shadows and Relax having zero counter vision. Losing that gem a, a little bit painful. I thought I thought that I saw Dread pick up another gem, but actually no one's even carrying it. It's actually probably just uh, sitting in base or sitting on the courier. Yeah, it's just sitting on the courier. Uh, Dread's courier. Dread's gem is so. No more gems in the game currently. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, like I said, Relax is just so far ahead in items, they feel like they don't even need the detection. And I think that that's true. I mean, if you look at the net worth, it's actually just disgusting. I'm not even going to go into detail about it, but still.
still. You don't want to be giving up those fights for free. I mean, even if you're still ahead by so far that you're probably gonna, like, 99% win the game, you still don't want to just take the small chance, because Medusa, as well as Ember Spirit, they don't need too much farm to just start being a massive threat, at least for stopping the pushes. But relax, then again, there are two sets of racks ahead already, so he, he, even if they win a fight, they can't really go push down the towers, and actually looking at the map, there's only one tower that he, he has managed to kill during the entire game. Yeah, it's just the tier 1 bottom, which was um, just Yoki's lane, so I mean, he's going to abandon that lane pretty early on anyway. I don't even remember what happened to leave that tower going down. I think it probably just the creeps pushing it down at some point. Yeah, exactly. He, he, they, I mean, I guess they, were too, they were too busy killing everyone that they just lost their tier 1 tower. Yeah, that's a pretty poor play right there. To be honest, I don't even really remember when he, he like crossed this line or something. <laughs> yeah, it's... They just conceal to the quarter of their own part of the map, it's like... <laughs> well, Windex concedes, he buys his own gym, so now they're going to have the vision against the Moonlight Shadow, they're just going to try to push up and end the game, they're tired of the games, so... They're going to be trying to get their fight done, this is going to be the last fight that they're going to be needing. Moonlight Shadow is used, but actually, Dread, he doesn't have the gym on him just yet, so they decide to back off. Looks like uh, he's going to pick up his finished blade mail, so now he's got that going for him, probably going to work on the Molnir if the game even lasts that long. And he picks up the gem purchased by the IO. I think this is all they needed now to just go in and finish this game. They can easily just wait at the tier 4 and there's nothing that he can do or is there? Well, Stone Gaze used and does have the Mask of Madness so it's going to be quite fast but doesn't even freeze anyone. Tame my Wallace come in. Well Ka Kaboots, you're out of mana friend. You're out of mana. There's a Blink Dagger on this Shadow Fiend. He's just going to hit on you man. Well, not hit on you. He's just going to smack you in the face. You're going to go down. Same with you, Ancient Apparition. Relo, hey, you wanted to be alive? Nope. Uh, Tame all oh, hey, did, did you like being alive, Ember Spirit? Nope, you're going to be dead as well. And Storm Spirit actually going to be the one to finish that off. But Tame my Wild, too big, too fast, too strong. Vision, all they needed. And he, he gets Team Life, calls a GG, and ultimately concedes game two. Yeah, this really just... I owe... Too strong. <laughs> Io too strong. Shadow Io. Fiend with a good start. Too strong. Uh, uh, he he was doing so much damage with just few right clicks. <laughs> it's it's disgusting almost. He was critting for like 900 in the end, I think. So yeah, that's not something you can handle when you're so far behind as it was. I mean, maybe if they had like you know, the assault Quiras on somebody, but they didn't even have a natural carrier for that item or anything. And even if they did. They just wouldn't have had enough gold for it, so yeah. Yeah, so. That's going to be too much. Uh, the series will end 1-1, and that's going to be it for us for the time being. Uh, I believe the next uh, broadcast, I'm not sure if Don Horatio is going to be doing it, but if we're going to be back at any time, it will be in... Let me check here. At 21 CT. Yeah, it's so going to be in, versus TCN. So it's going to be in two hours from now? It's three, in three hours. In three hours from now? Okay. So, looks like we'll be back here in three hours with the VP versus TCN, um, right here on Hefla TV 2. If you liked the games, uh, make sure you support the teams in the tournament, Relax and he, he both. The tournament uh, is Join Dota League. You can find more information at joindota.com. If you liked the content that we provided, you can uh, find us. Um, I'm on Twitter at call, call me Roxas and Coucher. I'm not sure about you, friend. Uh, where can people reach you? Yeah, it's at culture on Twitter, so I check it occasionally. <laughs> not, not the biggest fan of Twitter. I mostly you can just reach me at Hefla TV or anything. So, but yeah, at culture is the place where I'm most likely reachable. <laughs> the personal me, at least. Oh. I'm not about me. I'm all about Hefla TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Well, well we we all are, aren't we? So, thanks again for watching, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so, hope you have a good or rest of your day watching the TI4 qualifiers and in general just being awesome. So see you in, until next time. Have a good one. Over and out.